Kidney function declines during aging, and that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got the GFR estimate, or EGFR, as an index or biomarker of kidney function. And on the x-axis, we've got age from about 20 to 95 years old. In youth, we can see that the EGFR is relatively high, around 125, but in 95-year-olds, it's dramatically lower, about 55. So here, we can clearly see that the EGFR, again, as a biomarker of kidney function, declines during aging. Now, that's in part because EGFR is most commonly calculated with circulating levels of creatinine. And when there's reduced kidney function, we, we would expect to see increased levels of creatinine in blood. Now, creatinine levels increase during aging. And that's what we can see here with serum levels of creatinine on the y-axis plotted against age on the x within the 20 to about 90 year age range. And here we can see a slow but consistent increase, significant increase. You can see that p-value is far below 0.05 for circulating levels of cre uh, creatinine. In other words, creatinine levels increase during aging. Now, note that creatinine may not be a good marker of kidney function in advanced age. And that's because muscle mass is proportional to blood levels of creatinine. So here, we, here we've got circulating levels of creatinine on the y-axis plotted against muscle mass in kilograms. And there we can see a positive correlation. In other words, higher muscle mass is correlated with higher circulating levels of creatinine, whereas lower muscle mass is correlated with lower circulating levels of creatinine. Now note that muscle mass, as everybody I'm sure knows, declines during aging. So with that in mind, we'd expect to see less creatinine released from muscle into the circulation. But also note that during aging and because of decreased kidney function, there would be expected an increased circulating level of creatinine. So when considering these two variables, lower and higher levels of creatinine potentially in blood, we may not see an age-related change for EGFR as that biomarker of kidney function when using creatinine. In contrast, cystat sorry, cystatin C is a better marker of kidney function in advanced age as it is less sensitive to changes in muscle mass. Now, without going through that story, I wanna focus on how it changes during aging and all-cause mortality risk for people who may be interested in tracking it. So first, cystatin C increases during aging. That's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got circulating levels of cystatin C plotted against age from about 30 to 100 years old. And then for people who had no clinical risk factors, we can see that age-related increase for cystatin C. More specifically, relatively lower levels would be indicative of good, ki good kidney function, whereas relatively higher levels would be indicative of poor kidney function. Now, the age-related increase for cystatin C is important because relatively higher levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. On the y-axis here, we've got survival probability, plotted against survival time. In other words, starting from the initial assessment of cystat cystatin C, sorry, it's hard to say, uh, starting with that initial assessment, after a certain amount of years, in this case, more than 15 years, how many people were alive versus dead after uh, about a 15 or a little bit more than a 15 year follow-up. So when looking at the lowest levels of cystatin C, less than 0.7 milligrams per liter, which would be expected to be found in youth, we can see that almost everybody was still alive more than around 15 years later with a very small uh, uh, mortality, about 5% of the initial population had died after that 15 or so year follow-up. In contrast, people who had relatively aged levels of cystatin C, one, greater than 1.08 milligrams per liter, those values you'd expect to find in an 80-year-old or older based on the plot in the middle, we can see that almost half of that initial population, so starting with a cystatin C of greater than 1.08, more than 15 years earlier, about half that population died about 15 years later, thereby illustrating lower is better, but potentially better for cystatin C. But these aren't the only two ways to assess kidney function. There is another way to evaluate it, and that involves uremic metabolites, which by definition accumulate in blood in the presence of poor kidney function. So how are they formed? Where do they come from? So just using a few examples, dietary intake of the amino acids tryptophan and tyrosine, but also of choline, are metabolized by gut microbiota, so gut bacteria, into indoles, phenols, and trimethylamine, TMA, by choline, conversion of choline into TMA. These metabolites are further metabolized either by gut bacteria or in conjunction with the liver into other metabolites, for example, indoles are converted into IS, indoxyl sulfate, IAA, 
indole acetic acid or indole acetate, phenols into paracresol sulfate, and TMA into trimethylamine oxide, TMAO. So these four metabolites are uremic metabolites. Now, these uremic metabolites increase during aging, and that's what we can see here. So starting with those four uremic metabolites that I just went through on the left, their relative levels, and these aren't levels in micromolar, but these are relative levels as an untargeted metabolomic approach was used in the study. And if you're interested in the study, this and all the other studies will be in the video's description. So looking at levels of these uremic metabolites in 97-year-olds when compared with 67-year-olds, we can see that each was a lot higher in the older group when compared with the younger group. In many cases, almost twofold or more higher. And these differences were significant in looking at the p-value and FDR, false discovery rate. Uh, if it's less than 0.05, it's a significant difference. And you can see each of these four metabolite uh, comparisons between groups are all below 0.05. In other words, the older group had relatively higher levels of uremic metabolites, these four uremic metabolites. But these aren't the only uremic metabolites. There are many. And just to illustrate, here are seven more, dimethylarginine, 1 and 3 methylhistidine, uh, tri trigo, it's hard to say, so I won't say, but the one that starts with the T, transhydroxyproline, aconitate, which is found in the TCA cycle, and conurnine. And if you're interested in the full uremic metabolite list, it'll be in that paper that I just popped up, also in the video's description. So for these seven additional metabolites, we can see that they too are higher in the older group when compared with the younger group and significantly higher. Now, we don't have to sit idly by for uremic metabolites to accumulate during aging. They can be tracked and potentially optimized. And this is where IOLO's at-home metabolomics kit comes in, which I've posted many videos about. And if you missed those videos that I just rolled into the screen, I'll put them in the right corner. Now, this kit also has more data for more than 500 metabolites, so I have more videos coming. Discount link in the video's description if you're interested in using it. So what's my data? So we can see that here. So I currently have data for two tests. I just got my data for test number three today. So that'll be, that update will be in a future video. And we've got these 11 uremic metabolites. And I think that instead of looking at them each individually, I think the sum as a group, a uremic metabolite group is more instructive. So for the first test, we can see that the sum was relatively low, around 41 micromolar, but then it increased on that second test to a 62 and a half micromolar. So that's going in the wrong direction because again, remember, uremic metabolites increase during aging and with decreased kidney function. Now, most of that came from paracresol sulfate as it more than doubled test over test. So I'll have my eye on that going forward to see what I can do to reduce it. Now, interestingly, creatinine, which is also a uremic metabolite because it increases in the presence of poor kidney function, to, to have an increase in uremic levels, uh, uremic metabolites, when, using, when considering that creatinine is used to derive the EGFR as a biomarker of kidney function, to see higher levels of uremic metabolites, we'd expect to see higher levels of creatinine. But we can see that that's not the case, as creatinine levels were basically stable or slightly decreased test over test. In other words, we could have no change in EGFR, but have an almost 50% increase for uremic metabolites. Uh, in other words, uremic metabolites may provide more information besides just looking at creatinine as an index of kidney function. All right, so what's optimal in terms of the sum of these uremic metabolites? And that's very debatable as most metabolomic studies, as I mentioned, are untargeted. They don't actually quantify the direct levels of each metabolite. It's relative comparisons between groups in contrast with uh, this kit, the, this IOLO at home metabolomics kit, which gives direct quantification. So what's optimal in terms of that is debatable, but I think what is more certain is that we try to avoid an age-related increase for uremic metabolites. So that'll be the plan going forward, trying to bring that 62 and a half back down to 41 or lower if I can. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. 
Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.